Hello everyone, Dr. Clark here, and this is the first Doc's Opinion video of the year 2022. As you can tell from the title, this is my after theater reactions of my first viewing of the Batman. This isn't quite a review, but it's just my overall opinions on it, and there will be no spoilers. So just to start off, this is my favorite live action Batman film. Is for various reasons, but one thing I'll say, this is the type of Batman film at its core that I've wanted since I was a little boy. A film that puts Batman's intelligence, specifically his detective-oriented intelligence, at the forefront. Everything about this film, at its core especially, is exactly what Batman needs in the modern era, but really has needed since the beginning of time in terms of his live action adaptations. Because for those who know or don't know, I'm not that big of a fan on the majority of live action comic book adaptations. Just like how, be it American, Japanese, Chinese, Canadian, etc. Um, like with the Raimi films or the uh, or, or the Mark Webb films, um, the Mark Webb films and the Raimi films for Spider Man uh, didn't really intrigue me. And not only did the MCU films, I forgot what the actual director's name is, but um, they didn't intrigue me. The same thing is with Batman, but less so. Even the worst live action adaptations of Batman had certain aspects that kept Batman at his core. And that's kind of the running gag with this film. At its core, it keeps what makes Batman Batman. Robert Patterson's acting for the type of Batman and world that is in, for Bruce Wayne in particular, is the most different interpretation of Bruce Wayne that we've ever gotten is more similar to in terms of live action roles is more similar to the type of role that you see in Michael Keaton's performance slash in the Gotham live action TV show. But he brings his own flavor to it in terms of Bruce being this more <laughs> um, sheltered personality in the real world. But his Batman is what really brings um, his acting still skills to the forefront. His Batman performance is exactly what I wanted from a live action Batman voice. His 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 voice is probably my second favorite Batman voice in live action. Um. His body language, how he, how he carries certain lines, how he moves within the suit, just how he looks in the suit is immaculate. And this is, is what I've wanted. I think in just in terms of the Batman performance, he's the best Batman, just strictly talking about his Batman performance that we've had in live action. Uh, Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman. She's up there with Michelle Pfeiffer in terms of her performance, her lines, how she was written. I can clearly understand why her character, as it was reported a few days ago, is getting her own spinoff. Because Zoe Kravitz has really showcased over the past decade how amazing of an actor she is. And she really showcased her talent. She really and truly showcased her talent. Like... <laughs> She and one thing I'm gonna add with her character and some of the other supporting characters, be it bad or good, seeing these characters develop into the beings that they will become, seeing these characters mature into the beings that they will become in terms of their alter egos, quote unquote, was handled very well. But that goes into Colin Farrell as Penguin. I didn't even realize when the first trailer came out back in 2020 that Colin Farrell 
was the person who was playing the penguin. I thought he I thought that was a completely different actor or a completely different character. But how well he did, be it the the tri-state accent or really the quad state accent, um, how he carried himself, his physical mannerisms. I can understand again why he is getting his own spinoff. Like he he really showcased how good of an actor he is, and this is probably the best supporting role that I've seen of Colin Firth, Jeffrey Wright as Jim Gordon. This version of Jim Gordon is the most relatable version of Jim Gordon, and this version of Jim Gordon I can actually understand why him and batman unlike in other versions of the characters even really in the nolan trilogy um are buddies in a way in terms of how comfortable they are around each other and jeffrey wright was able to be more relatable this is a little bit more lighthearted and subdued in a lot of his more recent roles within let's say the past half decade but he really showcases range with acting within that type of role Paul Dano as Joker. Paul, I'm sorry, as as the Riddler. Paul Dano as the Riddler, he stole the show. One thing with the Riddler, and as you can tell from the, the trailers and everything, the Riddler has always been a character the same as Joker, because you know, uh, they're they're two they're two different sides of the same coin, or or really two different coins on the same side. The Riddler has always been a character in almost all of his live action adaptations, or really adaptations, period, has been an over the top character in various ways. Even if you watch different fan films and fan projects, he's still over the top in some way, even the darker, gritty versions to the more lighthearted versions. And Paul Dano's performance as the Riddler showcases that to a T. This is my second favorite live action version of the Riddler. <laughs> well, only behind the, the Gotham a version of the live action TV show. But Paul Dano really showcased, again, why in the War of Jokes and Riddle arc that happened within the main stream comics continuity, which is the main DC Megaverse continuity as a whole, why the jokes, why the War of Jokes and Riddles arc was such a well written arc. Because a lot of people think of the Riddler as a second string Joker, but he's not. And Paul Dano's performance really showcased it. Uh, um, forgot what his name is, but the actor who played uh, Carmine Falcone, this is a much different version of how Falcone is or Falcone is usually portrayed in most, be it the adaptations or the source material in different ways. But he held his own and. This is a much different version of the character than how he's usually portrayed. Drastically to a point of which um, I like it because it's so drastically different, but it makes sense within the context and tone of the world that is in. But also, before I forget, Andy Serkis's um, Alfred. I'm not going to spoil it, like I said, but the take that they did with this version of the character was extremely interesting in terms of the type of responsibilities that he has because this version of alfred clearly is a lot more hands-on with different aspects in this world than most versions of alfred are and i like that i like that this version of alfred is a lot more proactive character than how alfred is usually portrayed because a lot of this information is given context if you read the prequel novel that came out a few weeks ago for the Batman that basically explains Bruce's origin and and a lot of the other characters origins including the Riddler who is counter to his character in the film but that's one thing I want to add the Riddler and Batman in this film their connective tissue in terms of why they do what they do and and how they carry themselves is so similar is being handled in such an an interesting way like there's symmetry between the characters that you usually do not see in these types of films there's clear symmetry there 
but they're still clearly different. And I've never really seen this done in a superhero film in such an overt way. And it really stood out to me. I will say this. Just so far, this is my... Um, I would put overall, I would put Robert Patterson's performance as Batman, um, up there, you know, with, (laughs) with, um, Ben Affleck's and Michael Keaton's and Christian Bale's because one thing about it, and I will make a video about this too. I thought Christian Bale had universally the best version of what post-crisis Bruce Wayne is like that's who I see as post-crisis Bruce Wayne as a whole however um I don't think Christian Bale's Batman performance (laughs) was really that good in that entire trilogy but um that's kind of vice versa here when it comes to Robert Patterson because a lot of these stories that they talk about in terms of this film being uh, inspired by in terms of the comic stories, Batman Ego, Batman Year One, you know, the Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale stories, et cetera, et cetera. My favorite of those being Dark Victory. But to me, Batman Earth One and the New 52 Zero Year or Zero Year um, story are the two main influences, especially Batman Earth One. Because with how they essentially portrayed Batman and Bruce Wayne's psychological relationship it's almost the inverse of Batman Earth One whereas again I'm not going to spoil it whereas if you read the story you know that Bruce Wayne is in Batman Earth One Bruce Wayne isn't the mask that Batman wears whereas like it is in most versions of the character Bruce Wayne is clearly who he is and Batman is the mags that he puts on to fight the evil and Gotham in the world. In a way, Robert Patterson's performance in the Batman is the most antithesal that that has ever been in a live action adaptation. Now, I like it. Matt Reeves, the director of the film and the screenwriter. Out of all the films that Matt Reeves has directed... I've only seen, I think, two of them, two or three, but all of them were good. Let Me In, the second Planet of the Apes films, um, and off the top of my head, that's about it. But this is technically the third, if that's the case. Matt Reeves is an amazing cinematographer. All of these scenes, be it the the um, action scenes or slower pace scenes, the lighting the editing and everything is done in such a deliberate way that it that it has its own identity and aesthetic in which many films lack that nowadays but that takes me back into this the mystery aspect of the film the core aspect of there just like in the Raimi trilogy where the core aspect of that I felt was missing when it came to Spider-Man, the Raimi trilogy, was them not really showcasing Peter's physical and analytical intelligence. Because they never really wrote it within the film to be so. Um, which I felt that was missing in the amazing Spider-Man showcased that. And even the MCU Spider-Man showcased that. Bat this film did with Batman's detective skills in terms of his his understanding of of mysteries and figuring out different solutions to different things and and him and and just the fact that it showcases an aspect of the core of Batman's characters that even his most praised adaptations by the mass media has missed out on. And that's the core of what makes this film so good. Is that in everything about the film takes aspects of Batman that people don't usually focus on in storytelling because a lot of times they are scared to portray it correctly. This film did, but that's one thing about that. 
people who do not read or watch a lot of Batman stories that are more used to seeing the fast paced, more mainstream oriented type of Batman storytelling may not like this film. But that's kind of the, the thing with any character that's as long living and had as many adaptations as Batman. You can pick and choose what version of the character that you may like. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. It just means that you may like a particular version. Batman, you may like Batman Brave and the Bold over Boyd or Batman. Just because you may want a more lighthearted type of story. You may prefer um, the Batman Vengeance video game to the Arkham games. Because, you know, you still may want some of that or uh, DCAU flavor that the Arkham games is a completely different thing from the DCAU. But this film really showcases all of the core elements of what makes Batman Batman. So my overall opinion right after seeing the film, I love it. Uh, like I said, it's overall my favorite live action Batman film. I can tell, though, this. There are certain aspects of the movie that they had clearly changed or edited out in, in other press and pre-releases that they had. Because I can tell there are certain things in the movie that is missing. And it hurts it in a way concerning the world building. Not in terms of the world, because world building isn't bad. It's amazing. But I can clearly tell with how certain things were edited that they were trying to not put too much padding into the film in terms of having certain hints because there are hints at certain characters that most likely will appear in spinoffs and sequels but i can tell that they diluted and downplayed that in the film and in a way it, it hurt the film in a way because it's like they limited themselves purposely uh, for various reasons when it came to the world building but hopefully uh with how the, the spinoffs and sequels help um elevate the world that won't be that much of of a problem going forward but that that really needs to be an issue that they fix this is one of those films that especially if it gets another type of release or deleted deleted scenes on dvd and blu-ray that I can clearly see more of the, the bigger picture of the world opening up. Well, everyone, like I said, I highly recommend this film. Um, I have been excited for this for more than three years. And this makes me not just excited for Matt Reeves' Batman world, but the other upcoming live action Batman adaptations just for seeing how different they're going to be from each other ben affleck's michael keaton's and the titans batman you know the live action titans television show but everyone dr clark signing out